All right, everybody. So uh, welcome to episode three uh, in the Magical Voxel introduction series, an introduction to voxel modeling. In this third episode, we're going to be looking uh, a little bit more uh, specifically at color and the color palette. Um, also, I want to play a little bit with the the options of uh, mirror, uh, because you can kind of um, build some objects more quickly if you mirror that. Okay, so I have a, a scene here uh, that I've created with uh, a lot of different colors. Um, as we uh, mentioned before, I can color pick, and if I color pick here, I can see where the, where the color is in my palette. Right, so I just color pick this blue and I can see it in the palette. Now, what's really interesting about this uh, color palette system here is that um, you can switch uh, very easily from one palette to another. Um, and basically, what it's uh, what Magic of Oxo is looking at is really the position of the color position of the swatch uh, to make changes to it so I just uh, I clicked on number one so it has like these two uh, standard palettes here um, the first one being more vivid and the second one being a little bit more I guess moody uh, I would call it that way but if we look at where the swatch for the this blue wall uh, Color is. Uh, if you look at that over here on palette zero, if I go to one, I'll see that it becomes green. So that position, the coordinate of that swatch in there, it's actually key to um, to what the color is here uh, in this application. Uh, of course, we also have the color settings underneath here, and we can change the colors uh, based on hue, saturation, and value, as I mentioned before. Um, if I make a change to this blue here, uh, in that same spot, it's going to change this wall color in here. And uh, uh, but remember that the the position of it is very important for uh, swapping palettes, right? So because that's where the color is uh, um, in the palette. Uh, so uh, color uh, palette zero is this more like vivid with a lot of primary colors and secondary colors and uh, the this the palette one has some kind of a muted variation some pastels and things like that uh, palette three or two sorry uh, the third one is two uh, is a grayscale palette so um, you can kind of quickly uh, swap through these and have different looks um, Finally, palette uh, three, which is the fourth one, is a custom palette. So uh, typically, you have these options. You can uh, start from playing around with these uh, basic uh, custom or basic colors, like default colors, standard colors, in either zero, one, or two, if you want to work grayscale. Or you can basically just you know build something from scratch. Um, now let's see if we can do that, that. Let's see if we can build something from scratch. So remember that swatch? That was the wall swatch that we were looking at before. So I can see where it is right there. Now if I change that color in the color panel down here, so if I start changing it, you'll see that it's exactly that wall again. So it's, a, it's an interesting behavior, right? So it looks at the position of the swatch. That position is attached to uh, let's say a geometry like this wall, and then starts to change it. Uh, I can change that color in that object very easily. So let's say I'm going to do like a vivid red here on this wall, just as an example. Now, uh, this is like a custom palette. Uh, I can do a few things with it. Uh, if I want to move around the position of my swatch, I can. Um, if I hold the Command E, I can actually place the swatch in a different position. Okay. So 
uh, this could be useful for me to organize my custom palette for me. And this works the same way in the other palettes too. You can also move the, the other swatches. But this helps me organize uh, my palette a little bit more. Uh, if I want to make a new color, I would just click on an empty slot, give it a color. Let's say I'm going to make this one white. Right, so all the way to white. Um, and now I have a new color for this white. This color is not or has not been assigned to anything in this scene yet. As you can see. Um, but I could uh, assign it to um, an object. Let's say I'm going to be uh, selecting this little guy right here. And then I'm going to use the paint bucket on this one and make it white. All right? Okay. To deselect, uh, remember, uh, you have the option to hit Command D. Uh, you can also go to the Select uh, tools over here on the right side, and then say none. Now, um, there's an interesting thing that you can do here to create gradients of color in your palette. And this is what I want to show next. So let's say I have this red color that I like, I have this white color that I like, and I want to create perhaps a, I, have, I want to have some variations in between the two. Uh, what I would do here is I would uh, click on one of those two swatches and then I would hold the Alt key and in my case I'm on a Mac, a Command key. I think for a PC it would be Alt and Shift, but as a Mac user it would be Alt and Command and then I can click and drag this over and then it automatically uh, creates uh, a gradient. So this is kind of a nice trick if you're working in a custom uh, palette because you can kind of uh, build some interesting uh, variations very quickly. So let's say I'm going to do another one that's going to be a little bit more ambitious from uh, not to go into a white, but actually going from one color to another. So starting with this uh, blue here, and I'm going to put my new other color up here, and maybe it's more like a magenta. And then I would Click on this magenta, holding the Alt and the Command, and all the way up to that blue. So it creates that gradient from one position of the swatch uh, to the other. Right? So that's always uh, good to know. The other trick is using the color picker. Um, so we can color pick uh, colors, as I mentioned before. But um, I also mentioned before that the color picker uh, has a uh, shortcut too. So let's say I have this empty uh, slot here in my palette. If I hold Alt and then I uh, I click and hold, I'm still holding Alt here. You see that the edge of that swatch is changing colors. It's because it's trying to detect. Well, it's actually detecting um, all all of the colors on my screen. Navigate here, you see that now it has become purple, right? Um, if I release it, that purple is picked up. So it's a way to use, like, to uh, the color picker, but uh, through a uh, shortcut. So I'll do that again. Holding the Alt key, I'll click and hold. So I'm not releasing the button. And then let's see, I'm going to go to this dark uh, gray area, release it. And now that dark gray is the color of my swatch, so I can't pick up anything um, on the screen. All right. Now, if I'm building a custom palette, I have to be careful. Uh, because if I go, if I click on palette 0 or 1 or 2, I will lose my custom palette. So this is kind of an awkward thing. Um, hopefully, they will fix it in new versions of the program. So you're kind of being forced to save your palette. And the way I save it, it's over here. I have uh, a save button. I can also make new palettes or open palettes or load palettes through this button. Uh, but if I want to save, I just click on the save button for the palette. It automatically takes me to the palette folder. Uh, basically, it saves a PNG uh, file. So I'm going to save this as my demo to 
uh, dot in png it'll save the color information now I would be able to load uh, this palette again just clicking on the uh, open palette uh, but all right um, now let's look at something else. Let's see, let's look at something else over here. Let's see if we can uh, play around with another feature. So I'm gonna delete this. And uh, I just wanna show you the mirror tool. Um, and right now I'm working in the uh, orthogonal camera, um, which is kinda useful for uh, building uh, models. So um, the mirror uh, mode, uh, it's, it's over here. So you see that um, it looks a lot like the reflection icon in Adobe Illustrator if you used it before. Um, and you have the option to mirror on those three axes. I can mirror on the X axis, on the Y or the Z axis. So what it does, it basically clones or repeats uh, the shape on the other side of the axis. Uh, so let's see if I can do something here. I'm gonna use a very uh, strong color. And if I draw something here, it's mirroring on the other side of the, the X. So the, the X here, it's actually, I believe it's running it's right here in the middle, in between those two. Um, if I do the same thing, but now using the Y, see that it's mirroring. It's like the mirror is in between over here. So the other one was over here, and this one is over here. Uh, and if I use the Z, I can mirror stuff on those walls, right? Um, or even uh, floor and ceiling, I suppose. Now, um, if I, I can actually uh, also use all of these uh, together, if I want to be a little bit more uh, adventurous, right? So I can up with something pretty, perhaps maybe something like this. So these are all of the axes uh, mirroring each other. So uh, it creates three copies instead of just one. If I wanted to do, if I wanted to do a table, I would use X and Y, and then uh, start by building one on a kind of close to the corner. Uh, and then attach those faces. I can bring this up real quick. And then I'm gonna use a color like this. I'm gonna be attaching here. Okay. And then maybe It kind of, yeah, it makes it go faster uh, if you get used to it. So I have a quick uh, table done uh, using the mirror. Um, the other mode here is the uh, the axis mode, and it's similar, but it kind of uh, draws along the axis instead of uh, on the opposite side of the axis. Um, so I can quickly draw lines, if I choose X, so this is on the X. If I have X and Y, I can draw a plane. So I can draw a ceiling very quickly. Um, if, if I have only Y, I have a line again. Uh, if I have Z, you see it's actually a vertical line. If I had Z and Y, I would make a wall. If I have X and Y, I also have to 
If I have x and z, I also have a y. Um, of course, if I wanted to make a wall here, another quick way to do it would be using uh, attach but face. And then I can just click on those faces of the uh, work area. Now, um, let me show you the world a little bit more. So, uh, as if you remember in the beginning, I, I mentioned when I, we were looking at the, the, the UI that um, this is the work mode area where you are building scenes or models within this limited space. Right now it's a 40 by 40 by 40. Uh, but typically if you want to build more complex scenes, uh, you want to actually have compositions of scenes. And the way you actually can have compositions is going to world. And uh, the world mode is on that uh, button on the top right corner. Uh, it also works by hitting tab. So I can hit tab to go up on that mode. And now I have this scene here. And you see that this is the world here. It's actually way more vast looking. Um, I can copy and paste this scene. Command C, Command V. I can also use these uh, shortcuts, right? And now I have two of those instead of just one. So I can quickly kind of build something more complex. Uh, so here in the world mode, we have the ability to copy and paste these um, models or scenes uh, by using the buttons, copy and paste on the interface or just by hitting command C. So we can kind of build something um, command C, command v, uh, perhaps a little bit more quickly this way. That. Okay. Uh, I also have these options to rotate. Um, so I can kind of rotate them as well. I can rotate the actual scene. I can flip the scenes as well flip and rotate, you know, do uh, maybe some experiments here. Um, and you get a sense of how this works, right? So this is like working in a composition. So a composition made out of uh, several different pieces and parts. A few other functions that you see here, I think they are useful. Let's say um, I can um, do things like hide. Let's say I want to hide this top part select, I can hide it, then I can show it back again. And this becomes useful in complex scenes because you might want to hide uh, certain um, parts of it. So I'm hiding this one. I just uh, realized that I have an empty um, part of my scene here. Um, if I want to also, I think this is a good opportunity to show, if I want to add more um, workspaces. I can just by hitting the plus sign. I can also delete workspaces by uh, or scenes by hitting the minus sign. So if I hit plus, for instance, I can make a completely new one. Let's see, I'm going to look at it now. Hit tab. And now I can work in here and make something in here so I can add to my position. Hit tab again. Back at the world. Uh, view how I can delete this perhaps. So we can hide, we can flip, we can rotate, we can move, we can also align uh, based on the uh, X, Y, and Z uh, axis. Um, and there's also the, the, the option to change the order of things. So you can put things like uh, uh, in front of or in the background uh, depending on what you want to do with the composition. Um, the last thing I wanted to show, I think, in this mode here would be a Boolean. Boolean allows us to do things like union, for instance. Now I made those two uh, scenes into one. So if I go into the scene itself, hit tab, it's one single object. Right? So this is Boolean tab again. Um, if I did, uh, let's see, this is tab. If I um, hit 
this connected to this it will be connected to the basic thing perhaps um, I can also choose enter let me select this two to intersect so it'll be looking at where those two uh, work areas are intersecting it's giving me that shape instead all right so I hope you are uh, having a better understanding of how to create different palettes and work with different color and also create compositions in Magic of Ox. So uh, take the work we're doing in class and try to build perhaps a complex composition with lots of different pieces and then bring them together into a uh, render. And then you, you're going to see uh, that composition become uh, perhaps a pretty interesting scene. So uh, that's the end of the third episode. I'll see you on the next one.